All right, we're on number 14 on page 415, and we have to, st I can't stress enough that when you are dealing with absolute values, you have to have two cases, a positive case and a negative case. So let's write the positive case. The positive case is easy. It's just like it is without the absolute value sign. So 2y minus 4 is less than 7. Just as it appears here, but you just drop the absolute value markers. The negative case is tricky with inequalities. Why? 2y minus 4 is not less than, but greater than. And why do we switch it? Why do we switch it? Oh, you're divided by negative. Because you're making this negative. That's right. You make this the negative case, and when you use the negative case, you've got to switch the signs in absolute value. So be very careful about that. That's tricky. I saw a lot of people go out there and write this down, and then write this down without switching the signs. So be very careful. So we add 4 on both sides. We get 2y is less than 11. Okay, keep going. And then we, on this side we add 4 and we get 2y is greater than, no you don't switch the sign anymore, you already switched the sign so you don't switch it anymore, <coughs> it's greater than negative 3. Now we're dealing with fractions, she's right, she's going to divide by 2 and get y is greater than negative 3 over 2. Y is greater than negative 3 over 2. And then on the other side, the positive case, we're going to divide by 2 and get Y is less than, Jesse, what are we getting over here? Y is less than? Uh, what is it? Yeah, 11 over 2. Aaron? After the question is done. So you've got your number line, you've got an open circle going to your left because Y is less than 5 and a half, right? Now, you've also got y is greater than negative one and a half. You plot your negative one and a half. Okay, you plot your negative one and a half. In between one and two, or in between negative one and two. Negative one and negative two. And it's an open circle because this doesn't have a line under it. It's greater than, it goes to the right, and this is what happens. And I would do that, just do this. We'll do it with a red line. And so you see they overlap. And they actually keep on overlapping. That's right. So now, this is a special case, because usually when you have absolute values in two cases, it's usually or. But it looks like what we have is an and. But what really has happened is that these things have kind of switched position, and ended, they've ended up basically covering the entire number line. Because think about it. Pick a number anywhere on the number line, and will it satisfy this inequality? Pick a number, Natasha. A number on the number line. Seven. Seven. Good choice. Is seven less than five and a half? No. no. So it didn't satisfy that. But does it satisfy this? Yes. It does. So that means it's a, tr it's a solution for the whole thing. Because it just has to be one true for one or the other. Yes. Right? It has to be true for one or the other. This goes back to our pen example. Remember this? Yeah. Do I have a red pen and a green pen in my hand? Oh, God. I do. Yes, I do. It's true. But if I, if I put one pen away, do I have a red pen and a green pen? No, no it's not true. That's the and statements. That's a conjunction. But when we go to our or statements, or is a split on the graph, or it's a special case like this, and it's a much easier thing to say true for because I've got a red pen or a green pen. Do I have a red pen or a green pen? Yeah. I do. Now I put one away. Do I still have a red pen or a green pen? Yeah. I do. Because all I need is it for, to, to be true for one or the other or both. And that's what happened here. Is it is 7 less than 5 and a half? No. But it is greater than negative 1 and a half. It's true for one or the other or both. Then it's true all the time for all these numbers. Now, give me another number, Wayne. Give me another number. Let's have a negative number. Negative five. Is negative five less than five and a half? It is, so that's true. Is it greater than negative one and a half? No, it's not. But it doesn't need to be for this statement to be, for this to, to be a solution, it doesn't have to be true for both. It only has to be true for one of them. So that's an or statement. And guess what? What is our solution set here? This is very important because you don't just have one answer on this question. You don't even just have two answers. How many answers do you have? Nine. Like, uh, four. Lots, more than four. Nine. Is there any number? Nine, ten. Is there any number of I mean, is there any number that you can't pick that won't work? No. Try zero. Is zero less than five and a half? Yeah. Is zero greater than negative one and a half? Yeah. It worked for both in that case, right? Because why? Because it's under the handlebar part. Also negative one. Negative one works. 
Give me another number that works for both, Julian. Sure, one would work for both. One is less than five and a half, and one is greater than one and a half. Zero, one, Zero, one two, three. Anything from here to here works for both. Is there any number that won't work in this solution set? Yeah, absolutely greater than five and a half. Okay, greater than five and a half. Let's take six or seven, like Natasha picked. She rolled in, she picked seven right off the bat, and guess what? It's not true for this, but it is true for this. Therefore, it works. It is a solution for the whole thing. Because all it has to be is true for one or the other, right? Or both. Or both. <laughs> the point is, is there a number? I'm asking you. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying is all numbers will be true for at least one of them. So, but is there any number that won't be true, Kevin? Can you find a number on the number line that will not be true for this inequality? Jake. Would it be like Five and a half. Oh, good, good point. He's picking the point itself, isn't he? Because it's an open circle. What about five and a half itself? Is it less than five and a half? No. No. It didn't work for that one. But is five and a half greater than negative one and a half? Yeah. It is. So that worked too. Look at the line. It, it didn't work for the open circle, but the other one covered it. So they kind of go like this, and they cover the entire number line, right? Look at. I keep stretching. If I keep stretching, I'll kill myself. No. But anyway, the whole number line gets covered. And that's a special case. It's not a split. It's not a split. It's not a Harley handlebar thing. It's not a handlebar that you just grab onto. It's both. That's what happened here. It kind of splits and it also covers itself. So it's an, what's our answer? What's our solution set here? I've hinted at it. What do we put down though? How do we formalize it? How do we write it in math? Infinite, good idea. That's not what we've no put. Solution. Well, it's the opposite of no solution. solution. Yeah, lots of solutions, right? Infinitely many solutions. How do we say that? What kind of number line is this? Does anybody know? Anybody know? It's, there's fractions, there's decimals, there's whole numbers, there's counting numbers, there's integers. These are what are called all real numbers. And you make, uh, the symbol is an R like this with two bars here. That's all real numbers. Can you please write all real numbers? Please write on your papers all real numbers and remember when you have a situation where the solution is any number that you can possibly think of, then the answer is all real numbers. It's the opposite of no solution. You learned about no solution. We had special cases with no solution. Now we have a special case with all real numbers. Okay? Any questions? Okay. Page 416, number 48. There are two cases, the positive case and the negative case. The positive case, 3x plus 5 is greater than 0. In the positive case, it's really easy to solve. I'll do it, Glenna. The negative case, 3x plus 5 is less than, OK? Why did I, now the negative case doesn't change because it's 0. So, but we did change the sign, all right? Because it's a negative case. So we get 3x is greater than negative 5 x is greater than negative 5 over 3. And on this side, we get 3x is less than 5, negative 5, and x is less than negative 5 over 3. That's kind of strange, isn't it? We've got x is greater than negative 5 over 3, x is less than 5 over 3. So what's our solution set? Here's our, our answer to that part of the question. x is less than negative 5 over 3, x is greater than negative 5 over 3. On the graph, you're going to have an open circle at negative 5 over 3, which is negative 1 and 2 thirds in mixed numbers. And you're going to split. You're going to go less than going left over this way, negative 5 over 3. And then going to the right, greater than, greater than negative 5 over 3 or negative 1 and 2 thirds is this way. And you're basically covering the whole number line except for that one little spot right there where it's at negative 1 and 2 thirds. That is not a solution. There's another way to write this. This is curly key brackets. X is such that X does not equal negative 5 over 3. So the values for x such that x does not equal negative 5 over 3. And that's our answer to the question. The reason this turned out this way is because, because of the zero. When we had two cases, we had a case where it was negative and positive, but we had negative zero. But negative zero is the same as regular zero. So there is no negative zero. So that's why our two cases came out like this. And that's why we had such a unique solution set. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. That's good stuff. All right.